Our family harbors a secret, one that my husband Bob and I have been concealing from our daughter Murray. It's not that we intend to keep it hidden indefinitely. We plan to reveal it when the timing feels right. Yet, due to my own cowardice, I've struggled to disclose it until today. The fear of shocking or disappointing Marie paralyzed me, preventing me from finding the courage to speak. Ideally, we wished Marie could sail through high school without encountering any complications. Unfortunately, reality proved less forgiving. Marie stumbled upon her secret during a blood donation outing with friends, where she, eager to contribute to society, learned her blood type. The staff at the donation center inadvertently mentioned her blood type as A, a stark contrast to our O blood types. Curiosity and concern prompted me to question Marie when she returned home looking distressed. Despite her initial hesitation, Marie eventually shared her revelation. The gravity of the situation weighed heavily on her, and she posed a heartbreaking question during dinner with Bob, her eyes determined. Am I an abandoned child? Overwhelmed with emotions, I found myself unable to respond. Marie, growing more anxious, retreated to her room in tears. I am Wendy, a 41-year-old housewife who works part-time at a supermarket. Bob, my husband, is a salaried worker, and our daughter Marie is a 17-year-old high school student. Despite living in a modest apartment complex for families, we've managed to lead a relatively fulfilling life. While I'd admit to being indecisive, Marie, with her open-mindedness and reliability, provides a perfect balance. Our family dynamic has thrived over the years, with Marie initiating most conversations at home, sharing the intricacies of her school experiences. Bob, characterized by his kindness and deep empathy, ensures a harmonious atmosphere within our well-balanced family. However, Beneath the surface of our seemingly idyllic life lies a secret. I had initially planned to disclose it when Marie graduated from middle school, but succumbed to fear. Now, as she approaches high school graduation, the weight of the untold truth intensifies and I grapple with the fear of potential fallout. Bob, supportive and patient, has offered to take on the burden of revealing the secret, but I am determined to do it myself, despite the mounting difficulty. My negative thoughts and fears of damaging our relationship with Marie continue to plague me, and I recognize it as a personal flaw. Bob's unwavering support becomes a source of solace. Although I may frustrate him with my hesitation, he respects my decision and patiently waits for me to find the courage to speak. The story delves into the connection between Marie's birth and Bob, exploring the complexities that emerged during my college years when I was courted by two men from the same university. Tom's true colors became even more evident. I had met Tom, a friend since high school, and Bob, whom I befriended in a college club. Despite lacking romantic feelings for either, I eventually chose to date Tom, turning down Bob's confession. Tom graciously accepted my decision, assuring me of our continued friendship. Reflecting on it now, I sometimes wonder if choosing Bob would have been a better decision. While regret is futile, the thought occasionally lingers in my mind. I began dating Tom in the winter of my second year of college. Initially, he showered me with attention, taking me to aquariums and amusement parks. Later, I learned that his enthusiasm was fueled by the simultaneous confession from Bob. As our relationship progressed, I envisioned a future with Tom. After college, we started living together, but cohabitation unveiled a side of Tom I hadn't witnessed before. Despite both of us working as new graduates, household chores became my sole responsibility, and Tom exhibited reckless spending habits. The savings we planned for the future were depleted without remorse. Unable to tolerate it any longer, I confronted Tom about sharing responsibilities and pointed out his negligence. However, he responded with anger, making the situation increasingly difficult to handle. Although he never resorted to physical violence, his frequency of coming home decreased and he started staying out all night, leaving me questioning the purpose of our shared living. As a new graduate in an unfamiliar environment, I lacked a support system, feeling exhausted from facing everything alone. Despite contemplating breaking up multiple times, 
Fear of emotional turmoil and criticism kept me silent, allowing time to pass without addressing the underlying issues. The breaking point arrived when I fell ill and sought medical attention at the hospital. Upon learning of my pregnancy, a moment I deemed irreplaceable, I immediately shared the news with Tom. To my dismay, his reaction was explosive, demanding an abortion. It became evident that Tom was not ready to commit to a life with me, viewing our relationship as nothing more than a convenient arrangement for household chores and errands. When faced with the prospect of raising a child, Tom vehemently opposed the idea of being tied down by marriage, parenting, and family life. Insisting that I give up the idea of having the child, he left me with no choice. However, my maternal instincts prevailed, and with a strong desire to protect the life growing within me, I made the difficult decision to leave the house we shared. Although I couldn't bring myself to consider abortion, the challenges were daunting. Having moved to a big city for college, I lacked reliable family support nearby, and taking a break from my new job was financially unfeasible. In desperation, I turned to Bob, whom I hadn't seen since graduating from college. Bob, visibly surprised by my sudden appearance, sensed my distress and kindly welcomed me into his home without uttering a word. As I organized my situation, Bob empathetically discussed how he could assist me. Despite still harboring feelings for me, he expressed happiness that I had turned to him for support. Initially planning to give birth alone after staying with Bob for a while, he disapproved of the idea. Recognizing the challenges I faced, Bob couldn't stand idly by. He urged me to consider living with him, perhaps to alleviate any guilt I might feel. Despite potential conflicts and unspoken concerns, Bob chose to embrace the responsibility of living with me and my unborn child. It. I found myself relying on Bob's kindness, and in return, I promised to contribute to our daily lives as much as possible. Bob agreed to support us within his means. Although my unexpected pregnancy raised eyebrows among my co-workers, I was able to resign amicably thanks to the understanding of some senior colleagues. Contemplating the future, Bob suggested unifying our surnames to provide more options for our child. Bob formally entered my family as a son-in-law, and we submitted our marriage registration. Despite predictable opposition, especially from Bob's parents, who likely harbored concerns about their son, starting a family with a woman carrying another man's child, Bob rejected their objections with sincerity. His powerful words to his parents, expressing his commitment and belief in me, resonate strongly in my heart. Conversely, my parents expressed gratitude and apologized to Bob, acknowledging their reliance on him to support our lives. Bob, though embarrassed by being called the benefactor of their daughter, declared, I will make you happy. Bob consistently shared the responsibilities of housework during my struggle with morning sickness and provided unwavering support after childbirth. He diligently recorded Marie's growth on video and embraced her as if she were his biological daughter, for which I am deeply grateful. The time spent with Tom now feels like a distant memory. Yet, beneath this seemingly natural family image, I grapple with conflicting emotions. Witnessing the magnitude of Bob's character tightens my chest, feeling like a form of punishment for not choosing him earlier. Each moment of happiness now feels fragile, accompanied by lingering guilt and moments of hopeless anxiety. Terrified that revealing my secret may hurt both Bob and Marie, I hesitate to confess. Bob is aware of our circumstances, and depending on Marie's reaction, it could cause trouble for him as well. While the thought of confessing quickly might seem logical, the courage to do so eludes me. So after discussing it with myself, one day I noticed that Marie, who had been out with a friend, returned home with a somewhat stiff and awkward expression. Typically, she would enthusiastically share every detail of her outings, but this time she remained silent. Concerned about her discomfort, I asked if something was wrong, but Marie was hesitant to open up. I thought it might be the challenges of adolescence or perhaps a disagreement with a friend, but the atmosphere felt different. I sensed that she wanted to say something but was reluctant. Choosing not to pry, I decided to wait until she felt ready to talk. 
realizing that maybe I had sensed the tension and avoided the conversation. Finally, the time arrived to reveal my secret. However, Marie struggled to start the conversation and, in the end, remained silent. In the evening when Bob returned home, I began preparing dinner and called Marie. Gathering around the dining table had become a daily routine for the three of us. In the midst of the usual scene, Marie, seemingly having made up her mind, finally spoke. She recounted going to donate blood with her friend and being informed that her blood type was A. Bob. Sensing Marie's tension, subtly changed his expression, a detail I noticed. I was profoundly shaken by the realization that Marie had unexpectedly discovered the secret, and it left me unable to eat. Marie, aware that both Bob and I have type O blood, questioned why her blood type was A, understanding the biological improbability of having a child with a different blood type from both parents, she sought an explanation. In reality, we had always told Marie that her blood type was O. We submitted school documents with an unknown blood type and concealed documents like the Mother and Child Health Handbook, where her actual blood type was recorded, so she wouldn't feel upset about having a different blood type. Now, it was evident that our efforts had backfired. Attempting to explain to Marie, I found myself at a loss for words, and silence fell. Sensing my hesitation, Marie wore a sad expression and murmured, Was I abandoned? Despite my strong desire to deny it, my voice failed me, and my stiff body remained silent. Bob, aware of my strong desire to explain myself, met my eyes but hesitated to speak. Marie appeared hurt by our lack of response, and tears started to trickle down her cheeks. Without uttering a word, she got up from her seat and locked herself in her room. I realized that I had made a mess of things, and the regret set in. Why did I always falter and swallow my words at crucial moments? The uneaten dinner, once filled with Marie's laughter and chatter, grew cold on the table. Bob and I finished our meal in silence covering Marie's untouched food and placing it in the refrigerator for her to eat later. The usual lively atmosphere was replaced with an eerie quietness, and for the first time, I faced sleep in an unsettling silence. Fully aware of the shock Marie experienced, causing tears to overflow. As I lay in bed, Marie's earlier words echoed in my head, her voice sounding profoundly sad. I wanted to hug her, but fear paralyzed me, afraid of her rejection. Ultimately, I recognized my own cowardice, driven by the fear of getting hurt myself. Countless self-berating thoughts filled my mind, yet I still struggled to find the right words to say to Marie. There were countless things I wanted to express. I wanted to reassure her that she was not an abandoned child, but my precious child, born with genuine love. I vividly remembered the sensations of pregnancy, the gradual swelling of my belly, the pain of labor, and the warmth of Bob's hand during childbirth. However, I found myself entangled with unnecessary doubts, wondering if it was all just my ego. Bob and I raised Marie with utmost care, trying not to hurt her, pouring out our hearts filled with genuine love. Yet, in the face of Marie's words, I couldn't even deny them, let alone respond. If I could turn back time, I would immediately deny her words, hug her, and affirm that she is indeed my beloved blood-related child. However, the hesitation may have already sown seeds of doubt in Marie's mind. Regretful tears started to overflow again when there was a knock at the door. Bob quietly entered, asking if it was okay now. Sitting down beside me, he warmly and kindly rubbed my shoulder, acknowledging the passage of seventeen years. Despite his comforting words, I struggled to accept them due to self-loathing. I uttered self-destructive words, declaring that the game of playing family was over. In a tone I could never have imagined from the usually gentle Bob, he firmly denied my statement. Acknowledging the complexities of our connection, he asserted that there wasn't a single lie in these seventeen years. With conviction, he tightly grabbed my hand and urged me to pull myself together. I've come to realize that I conveniently relied on Bob when I found out I was pregnant with Marie. Throughout our daily lives, I've carried a sense of guilt, feeling sorry for Bob because of my own perceived weaknesses. 
My tendency to think negatively led me to believe that I had somehow stolen Bob's life or that I was taking advantage of his kindness. Perhaps Bob also noticed my internal struggles and the weight of my guilt. In my moments of weakness and shame, where all I could do was cry, Bob, instead of reproaching me, gently hugged me and firmly stated, We are a family. Those were the words I longed to hear the most, and simultaneously, they fueled my desire to share the truth with Marie as soon as possible. The following morning, with swollen, puffy eyes from crying, the first thing I saw was Marie, also with puffy eyes. Noticing me sitting on the sofa, she approached and sat down beside me, laying her head on my shoulder. Slowly, she opened her mouth, expressing her regret for jumping to conclusions the night before. According to Marie, Bob emphasized that she and I are indeed mother and daughter, assuring her that he would always be on her side, no matter what. He encouraged her to hear about the circumstances of her birth and the beginning of my relationship with Bob directly from me. Marie, relieved to know that our relationship wouldn't change, felt happy about the reassurance. Witnessing Marie's strength, I couldn't help but feel a sense of self-disgust for still lacking the courage to face my own feelings and share the truth. Despite the positive outcome, the internal conflict persisted, and I yearned to break free from the cycle of running away from my emotions. Taking a deep breath, I began to speak slowly, watching Marie's reactions as I unfolded the story of her real father and how Bob embraced us as a family when I discovered I was pregnant. Despite shedding tears that I thought I had already exhausted the day before, I pressed on, determined to share the truth in my own words. I recounted precious memories, Marie's first rollover, the day she ate solid food, and her first steps. I apologized deeply for not expressing these sentiments properly the day before, acknowledging that my actions had made Mary anxious. Tearfully, I expressed my sincere apology and the desire to be her mother from that moment on. Marie, after a moment of contemplation, responded with an unexpected laughter, pointing out the differences in blood types and horoscopes. She reassured me, noting that I tend to clam up when flustered. Marie expressed understanding, and her eyes emitted a gentle warmth, making me feel genuinely relieved. Overwhelmed by Marie's strong words, I mumbled like a child seeking forgiveness. Marie, patting my shoulder, assured me that her feelings for the family would never change. Looking at Bob with tearful eyes, she brightly declared, Dad, Mom, bringing a complete shift in the atmosphere from the day before. With a newfound sense of relief, we hugged each other, promising not to let go. Marie, breaking the emotional tension, suggested making breakfast. As we calmed down, it felt a bit embarrassing yet refreshing, as if our family could restart. Our daily routine resumed, and Marie prepared a breakfast that included a soup tasting exactly like the one I always made. Even the side dish, Marie's original stir-fried vegetables, brought warmth to my heart. Marie, sipping the miso soup, shyly admitted it tasted like mom's. Bob praised Marie, and our dining table once again became a place of smiles and conversations. Marine, recalling Bob's reliability, acknowledged his quick support during challenging times, appreciating his reliability and kindness. Grateful for Bob's constant help, I expressed my appreciation, bringing tears to his eyes. Later, Marie's strong desire led to a small wedding ceremony with a photo shoot capturing the essence of our family. Now, as we gathered around the dining table, the episode of the day was about Marie's recent strength training. She aimed to tone up before summer's end, and with a smile, she suggested I join her. The idea of trying it with Marie brought a sense of unity and warmth to our renewed family.